So here's the idea with this. What we wanted to do was a very informal workshop, answer questions for people who are currently using Foam Frat Studio. Um, however, we did say that we would open it up to people who are not using it just because some of the content stuff we're going to talk about really is applicable anywhere. Although I think it's best used in Foam Frat Studio. But now that we have a learning management system that allows you to create your own content, I think we can have a lot of fun with this because we did the Educators Atlas course where we talked about how to teach live, how to record classes and stuff. Um, but now there's a lot of specifics to Foam Frat Studio. And so we had this idea, like, what if we did like this content creator workshop where we have all of the training officers or anybody who's creating stuff for Foam Frat Studio come together and we can all pick each other's brains on how to make it look the best. Because the way that we've set up this learning management system, you kind of have to know how to do graphics and thumbnails. So if you guys are here, you're probably very familiar with, with Foam Frat and, and what we do. And we put out content in a bunch of different forms, right? So you have like the, uh, the Facebook posts that uh, Brian King does a lot of this stuff. He does a lot of the graphics for these. Um, and then we put out like a weekly blog and podcast. And, and then you have like the content that's actually in the class, right? When you're actually taking a class through Foam Frat. And so our main goal I would say like our, our, our MO is to take education, but disguise it as something else. Make it look like a movie. Make it look like a fun graphic or make it look like a, a Disney cartoon or something. Something that doesn't look so sterile, PowerPoint driven. And I think everybody knows that now, right? Everybody always brags that their content isn't just PowerPoint driven. But when it comes to getting creative and actually, you know, putting the uh, pen to the paper and making this happen, I think sometimes we meet dead ends. We're like, ah, I just don't know how to be creative. So we're going to give you guys some inspiration today. So the way that this, this LMS works is you have this self-paced page when you first sign in, right? And I think everybody's uh, seen this. We've advertised this. This is what you see on uh, the 2021 update when we talked about this LMS. And you can tell right away, if you didn't know how to make thumbnails look cool, this page would not look as, as good as it does right now, right? Everything is about the aesthetics of it. So you go in and you say, all right, so here's your thumbnail. So Sam's going to talk about how to create these thumbnails. Um, and then you have the actual class. So let's say I click on this class, the mechanics of breathing. And now this is the title page. And so the title page is where you give a brief synopsis of what the talk is going to be about. Um, because we have cap C, we list our objectives, like, you know, typically there's three objectives, and then we'll list all of our references below if you were to keep scrolling, this is just a picture of it, but you put all your references at the bottom. And then you get into the actual video. Right. So you start watching the content and then you go into the quiz. They'll take the quiz. You got to put in your rationale and then they get their certificate for it. And so this is the, the flow right now that we're using. And who knows, maybe eventually we'll change it or we'll put some games in there or something. But this is currently how it works. Pretty straightforward, except you got to know how to make the title page and the thumbnails and the quizzes and how to create your own certificates. And you want to do this in a way that disguises education as something fun. So what we're going to do here for the next hour is we're going to start off talking about thumbnails, how to create really captive, captivating thumbnails. We're going to discuss building a title page in Foam Frat Studio, how to create animations. Sam's going to give us a little tutorial on green screen use and how it doesn't really require a lot of money or a lot of setup. You can do it pretty quick. And then we're going to talk about uh, building your own quiz and certificate. So with that, I am going to uh, turn it over to Sam. And Sam's going to share his screen. Yeah, I have that enabled. So let me know if this, uh, I'm going to stop your screen share real quick. And that Sounds come up okay? Yep, got it. There was something in Q&A. What was in q and I didn't get a chance to see it before I grabbed my uh, screen share. Oh, uh, just just put in the um, where he's from. Oh, okay. 
I thought it was something like and, uh, and here's the other thing, uh, just so we don't lose this stuff in the chat. If you have something you've been, you know, I, I hope they hit on this. You have some points that you want to cover, put that in that Q and a, and then we will make sure that all of those get addressed before we close this out. Cool. So like Tyler was looking at, here's all the thumbnails inside of here. And it's it's not a secret that we built this to look like a streaming platform. So that was the whole purpose of getting this to look this way. And the way we scroll on here, it was supposed to be like browsing Netflix or you know Hulu or Disney Plus and that kind of stuff. And all of those all those streaming services really rely on essentially a thumbnail, some kind of preview that as you're browsing these things, it's it's meant to draw you in a little bit. So you can imagine like, you know, imagine that you, you sign up for foam frat and you know that we do all these uh, animations and you do, we do all these infographics and stuff. And then imagine signing in here. And instead of this graphic that says, you know, the mechanics of breathing right here, you just had a kind of a screenshot from the class. Um, maybe it's a random, you know, whatever comes up is the randomly generated thumbnail on a video. And sometimes it's just like the dead middle of it. And your eyes are closed and you're, uh, you know, looking like this. Then you came in here, you saw that and underneath and just some plain text that said the mechanics of breathing. It wouldn't be very, uh, I don't know, it wouldn't get you uh, excited about that. The, this thumbnail right here, it seems simple, but it's really the advertisement for the class. It's, it's what draws you in in the first place. It's kind of like your packaging. Like imagine you get an iPad and it comes in a brown paper box and with some, with some stuffing, you know, peanuts in there. It, you wouldn't be impressed. So the packaging is important. So the way that we do these uh, is we try to create a lot of contrast between the background and the foreground. So usually what we're doing here is we're coming into the lecture. We'll take this capnography one, for example. Let's kind of do like a quick case study of these. You know, capnography and the Polar Express. What I did is I just took one of my graphics from uh, one of my main slides, which is why we always push having a theme for your lecture because it kind of ties everything together, makes it seem like it's presented in this nice little package. And so with this one, I use this gold color. There's a lot of contrast between the background blue and this front, this foreground gold, right? And it goes along with this whole theme and you start thinking, oh, I wonder what, I wonder what that one's about. Or this one, flipping the switch between respiratory distress and failure. All of these are really high contrast and all of them drag in something from that lecture and use it in this, in this very first kind of advertisement for it. Um, we wouldn't want to trick you and say like, you know, this is a very specific thumbnail down here. Why does it have this paper tiger on here? It says trauma resuscitation. How does this tie in? All of them are very easy to read. Um, Usually we use a lot of fonts that use uppercase because they're very easy to read. As I'm going through this page, I don't want this to be really hard to read. Like you'd have to really stop and think like, what is that class about? I want like a, an instantaneous, oh, this, this is on uh, ambulance operations. See the back of an ambulance, really easy to read. Scene logistics. I see a scene in the background. Um, this is kind of like an abstract one right here, at-risk populations about human trafficking. And this is one of those very famous human trafficking logos that they use for international human trafficking with this, uh, the bound hands and the sale on it. So things like that, you can work into these thumbnails, but how do you, how do, you do them in the first place? So we use slides and we take screenshots of them. So we build all these from scratch, but maybe you're like, eh, I'm not super into the graphics. Um, yeah, I see you guys doing these from scratch. Seems like a lot of work. If, if you're not super into slide design and stuff like that yet, because if you're going to kind of make these uh, themed and, and really kind of catch up with the times, you'll, you'll have to have some kind of theme and stuff. But in the meantime, if you want to create a thumbnail pretty easy way, there's this website called Canva. And maybe you guys can let me know if you guys have ever win, done, been on this uh, website in the chat or not, if you guys have heard of Canva. I think it's free. I have not used this much, but I know a lot of people who do. Um, you can come in here and they have all these templates. And what you can do is just edit the templates. And you'll see a lot of the same stuff. So imagine I'm browsing through here and you know I can just come in here. This one says free. You know, A lot of these say like free in here. And you can see they hook you up with a font. They hook you up with like some borders and some colors. And you can get an idea of, of what you're doing. Um, I'll, I'll just go back up here to this, you know. Okay, so this is like nothing to do with EMS, right? Well, I could easily come in here and I could say, okay, I'm going to get rid of that person in there. So imagine that I got rid of this guy. I just come in here and delete him. 
and I could put an EMS provider right there. Then I'm thinking, eh, I don't, I don't really want like this, uh, this weird color in the background. You know, I don't, I don't really like this like pink or anything like that. Then I could just come in here. I could like change it to like gray and I don't know, like, like blue or something like that. I guess that's not the right little, little slice right there. I'll get rid of, get rid of that guy. I think it's this, this slice right here, this one, it's somewhere in here. There it is. Um, you know, you could change this background into essentially, you know, whatever, whatever you want, you could change it to gray and maybe that's according to more of your color scheme and you could change this stuff. So it doesn't have to be anything particular, but if you're really looking for just a, a way to use some defaults, come in here and play around with it for free. You know, this has a lot of the same stuff that we're using just in a different type of package, you know, and you can take any of this stuff, make it about EMS, you know, just explore the world or, um, maybe I saw another one in here before when I was flipping through this, it was. There's something on a table. Oh, here it is. So imagine that you're doing like, a, you, know, you might thinking like a training has nothing to do with an iPad, right? Just imagine you take a picture of a piece of equipment on the table and you make it kind of look like this. And then you just change what it says here. It's an, it's a IO drill on the table. And it says um, how to get your humoral head IO the first time, optimize your first pass success with IO. And then your company logo is up here. So it's really, it's really simple to build these things out. Um, if you're just beginning with it, maybe use just your slides and try to create something. Just remember high contrast, big lettering, simple to read, something that looks high definition. Um, if you want them to do, if you want to do them a little bit more like us, um, this is where we get all our fonts from. This is called defont.com. This is a big thing. Like if you look at our, our, uh, our thumbnails in here, I mean, there's a lot of different fonts that are go going on. Like I can tell you this one's called Goldini. Um, and, and this one is called like, uh, paper, uh, use pay or, uh, uh, some distress paper or something like that. This one I think is called like dojo. This, um, you know, this one is called, uh, distress fracture or something like that. And so all these have these, these different ones that we use pretty frequently. And we tend to grab ones that are really easy to read. I know this one is down here is called like university. And, uh, it was because we did like a, a bunch of pediatric cases that took place at a school. So I use like a university type, uh, high school lettering, logo lettering, you know, something that kind of goes with it. And you can grab all those for free from defont.com and, and come in here and say like, uh, you know, okay, I want some, something old school, you know, right here. And there's, there's all vintage pant, you know, all these different things. I guess these are a little bit, uh, squirrely, but, uh, you know, you can, you can get all kinds of different stuff, script school, you know, doing a, a lecture on pediatrics and you had something like this, it would make a lot of sense, right? So you can come in here and find a bunch of stuff that you want. And uh, I'll show you guys how that kind of transfers over to a, to a slide. So here is the one that the little class that I'm going to do later on green screen. Here's the thumbnail that I came up with. And so a little sneak peek later. So it's called, so you're a slightly bored educator browsing Amazon, right? This isn't uh, this is one I'd use for a live class. You know, I kind of was thought it was a funny way to introduce the, the, um, the green screen stuff, but if I was putting it on an actual thumbnail, I'll probably use something like this. So you're a slightly bored educator browsing Amazon, change the color of the Amazon. I could actually probably lighten that up a little bit and I come over here and just say, well, that doesn't, that doesn't quite pop enough. You know, maybe I'll, maybe, maybe I'll make it a little bit lighter. And um, I have these nice bold letters. They're way easier to read than these ones over here. So different things for, for different uh, situations. I'll just show you guys how I made this real quick though. It's really easy. So obviously this is just text, right? So I have a text box. I made it really big, kind of put it near the center so it doesn't get cut off for any reason. So let's get rid of this. I'll take this apart piece by piece. There's a big, uh, this was used to dim the background. And so I'll just kind of move this out of the way. And then I just had like some pieces of a screenshot from Amazon. So I just had this heading up here. I thought it was, you know, I snuck that one behind it. I put this black over the top and that created kind of a, a almost like a, a separation between this background and this foreground right here. And so that's, you know, if I was making a lecture called this, I'd probably shorten it up too. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I just call it board educators browsing Amazon. And then maybe I'd put like a little green screen thing over here or something, you know? So, um, this is one that I just did for the, the blog that just came out today. This is kind of attention grabbing, you know, you know what it's about right away. I have this drawing of this, this, uh, kidney and this renal, or I mean this, uh, adrenal gland. And then I put this like picture of cortisol in the back. This is a cortisol molecule. And I had just kind of like darkened it a little bit. 
and put it back here to give it some texture, a logo, and just a little bit of, um, and just a little, I like this uh, font a lot, it's called uh, black space. And so I just put those around kind of everywhere. And this is the, the thumbnail that we came up with, but I didn't use that for YouTube, I used this one because it plainly tells you what it's about right away, adrenal crisis, and then a picture of Brian and I, and again, kind of the same thing. I have like this uh, black box that kind of separates everything to give some contrast to the letters. And so I have adrenal crisis, I have our logo, I have the text, the picture, <clears throat> and the pictures of us. So putting all that back in goes like that. And that's, that's kind of how we do thumbnails. Tyler, what do you got to add? Uh, do you want to talk about the screenshot aspect? Oh, yeah. Because how do you get that into the actual thumbnail? Sure. Yeah. So if I'm going to take this, uh, this screenshot right here, I can do this a couple of ways. Um, thumbnails almost on any platform, uh, thumbnails are usually used as something that, uh, they're supposed to load very fast because when you load a page, I'm sure you guys have all been to those pages where it's like, you load the page, you know, your internet speed is good, but then it's like loading them like really slow. And you're like, okay, I just want to see a preview of everything. Like, just show me what's on this page. Like, imagine you open up Netflix and like every pay, every little, you know, series that you could watch or movie just slowly loads. So the reason um, that Tyler brought that up is that what you want to do is you want to kind of take a small screenshot. Like I could take this thing and I could say play, right? And here's this giant screenshot, you know, and, and I could take a screenshot of this whole thing and that could be my thumbnail and it'd be really, you know, it's a huge picture. And so when I, when I bring it down, man, it'd be super high quality, but that's not how thumbnails work. So you want it to be a small file. So you want a small picture. So actually when I'm doing this, I zoom way out like this probably looks way too small right now, but actually I'm taking a screenshot from there and I'm just capturing. He's, he's hitting shift command four on a Mac. Yeah. And maybe somebody here knows how you do that on a, a windows computer. But yeah. so I, I literally just take this thing and then, um, you know, I, I have it, I can't show it to you on this screen over here, but, um, I'm going to show you guys how to grab that and put it into you know, it's funny, you were talking about the, the, the thumbnails loading and Netflix has that issue where they all have to hydrate onto the page. And mm -hmm. so that's why when you click on Hulu or Netflix, it'll have like a little like screen that just says Netflix and it'll be sitting there for a little bit. And then it'll go to the page because it's waiting for all those thumbnails to load. Mm -hmm. And you can always tell if something happened because it'll pop up and you won't see the thumbnails. So that's why we, our developers told us you got to keep that file size small. So that way it pops up right away. Yeah. And then this is how you change it. So let's say that, you know, that one that I just grabbed, um, this screenshot right here. So I just have this sitting on my desktop. And yet, like I said, you know, not a very big file at all. It doesn't have to be, you want it to be a small file. And then um, once you click into your section, so let's say this was your section, you know, these are all ours, obviously, so you won't be able to edit them. But uh, where your section is, like, for instance, down here by podcast, if it was underneath podcasts. When you come in here, you can just click on this button right here, this little uh, pen, pencil, whatever it is. And uh, you can hit change selected thumbnail. And so I could come in here and I could actually grab this one. I'm not going to, because I don't know where the other file is for that, but I would change that. And then it would just, just create pop. a new one. Oh yeah. And sure. I can just delete it. Yeah. So let's do that. You're going to notice on this page, it looks a little stretched out, but on the actual page, it'll, it'll pop up and now just hit self paste and it'll refresh. I'll just, I'll just refresh it. So I think I took that one a little too small. <laughs> that, one's <a> little <laughs> bit, that one's a little bit too small, but um, I, I would go a little bit bigger. Sometimes it's a process of trial and error. I suppose these pictures are just a little bit bigger than that. This looks a little bit grainy. So I'd probably maybe double the size. You usually want it to be underneath a megabyte. We'll see how far off I was on this one. This one ended up being a, oh, 64 kilobytes. So <laughs> I have a really long way to go before it's too large. So I could have definitely uh, taken a larger screenshot of that. I went a little bit on the small side, but it's better to go small and then, and then work your way up until it looks good rather than uh, just not being able to, to upload it at all. So that's, that's thumbnails. If you guys have questions about, you know, just creating that kind of stuff, um, pop them in the chat. I haven't been watching the chat, so I'm just catching up right now. Yeah, I think uh, somebody had a question on how to do the black shadowing that you were showing. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me, uh, I'm going to take back screen share real quick. Then that, it's easier just to show. Um, well, 
I just moved all my stuff over here. We can, uh, let me move this. All right, I'll stop sharing there. So to do those black backgrounds, and you can do this in, um, I really feel like the easiest way to create these things is either in PowerPoint or Keynote. Um, all I'm doing here, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. And so here's, here's it without that black background. All I'm gonna do is grab a shape. Everything, we, almost everything we do is with, just with shapes and then we just edit them like crazy. And so it defaults to white. And so obviously this looks real, this looks real stupid. So I'm just gonna go in here, change it to black. And then I just change the opacity. And so I just go like this until I'm happy with the contrast. Now, obviously this is in front of everything. So I actually have to click on this uh, text right here. And I control click it, or if you're on a, a mouse, I guess that would be a, a right click, right? Bring to front. And, and now I have this separation and I can just change the opacity until I'm happy with it, just like that. And so I'm thinking how, you know, how much contrast do I want? I don't want to black out the background like too much. You won't be able to tell and too little. I won't have enough contrast. So probably somewhere right here you know, in the middle where it gives it some texture, but it's, it's got a lot of contrast. Nice. All right. I am going to share my screen now. And yeah, um, Heather had asked, what was the name of that thing? Yeah, it was um, Canva. C oh, you got it. Okay. All right, cool. All right, so let's talk about the, uh, the title page. So the title page, we wanted to model after kind of like the, the title pages that you see on Netflix, Disney Plus, where you have a picture, something representing the talk. And then you have a little uh, brief little synopsis on what it's about. And this is where you'd have your objectives. And then you'd have, you know, a play button that you could watch. And we'll probably add, we're, we were talking about adding like um, uh, little stars so you could rate each class and stuff as we, uh, as we keep adding on features. But this is what our title page looks like. And so you'll notice a couple of things. We have a backdrop and then you got this little play button here. And then on here, you have your objectives and all of the, uh, the information on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up FoamFrat Studio on here. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So let me put this down. All right. So we're going to say that we are uh, we're creating, or actually, I'll just go into how I set up some of these. So these are sections. So you see how it's like airway, respiratory, ventilation. That's a section. Cardiovascular is a section. Trauma is a section. And so when you're wanting to add a new section, you go into admin and then you click this manage sections button, right? And so this is how you're going to add in a section. So you hit this, you create a thumbnail, and then what that'll do is it'll create a new section on the bottom. So we just did that. We just created this, this podcast one, right? And then when you click on the section, you see all the classes within that section. And then within this, if you wanted to add, you know, when we add another podcast, I just hit this little plus button right here and I create a class. Now, all this is going to do is exactly what Sam just did. It's going to create like a thumbnail right here. And then that thumbnail is going to have this little class builder. So you see this little uh, blue circle with the uh, triangle in it. That is the actual class builder. So when I open that up, this is where all the stuff gets built out. So I have my title screen up here, my video that I upload, my text content, and then the quiz down here. So the title screen, whenever you want to add one of these things, what you do is you, you just scroll over this. You don't even have to click it. You just put your mouse over it. And you'll have quiz, text content, video, and then the title screen. So when you click add the title screen, it's going to give you a screen that looks like this. And so what you have here is the name that will appear on the little sidebar where they hit next is the first thing they're going to see. You have a description, which would show underneath that. We typically don't put anything in the description area. And then you have to upload a background photo. So upload a background. Now, this is tricky because the background, as you can see, when you look at the actual class, like if I open up uh, this one, the background has to be dark. So what Sam was just showing you where you darken that, you take that opacity, opa opacity, opacity, and make it dark. And then 
you want to get it as dark as possible with still being able to see the stuff that's in there. So what I'll do is, and I'll just slide this over here so you guys can see this. I will say like, I'm going to take my talk I did on, uh, let's just say the, uh, the sodium trap. This is a talk I do on, on uh, hyponatremia. And let's say I'm uploading this talk into Foam Frat Studio. And maybe I'll take this picture here. This is a guy drinking a beer. And so what I'll do is I'll just take a screenshot of this. And then I will put it in here. And you see how I have a black background and I'm, we're doing all this in, this is in Keynote. But I'll take this and then I'll take the opacity and I'll turn it down like that. I think that's about right. That'll look, that looks good. And so and then you guys I'll, use actual photo editing software. We're just doing this because this is the easiest way. This is how we do everything on this. Yeah, it, it's just so easy to use a slide designer because we're in there anyway. We're always editing in there and there's like no rules or weird commands that you have to know like you can pick it up pretty pretty fast and, and do pretty much anything you need to do so that's why we use a lot of this stuff and just take screenshots it's just it's purely a productivity thing could we take this and put it into you know photoshop or pixelmator or you know one of these other programs yeah and if you're good at that kind of stuff and you want to use photo editing software like absolutely go ahead we Everybody thinks that we use a fancy photo editing software and we're just over here using free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like almost everything we use, not almost for the big stuff that we do, like almost everything is is free software. Keynote, iMovies, you know, just normal stuff that that comes with. And I'm sure there's free versions of that stuff that we, you know, that come on Windows as well. And Sam, if you have the uh the chat open, mm -hmm. just in Nothing case anybody... yet. Okay. All right, so awesome I'm just going to make Brooke it... laughing at me. That's it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to upload this sodium trap one just so we have a class to play with. So there it is. If I go to like my self pay screen, I can see that down here. So now I'm going to edit that class. All right, so I click this, open this up, and now I'm going to add a title screen. So I hit add title screen. This pops up and this is going to say, maybe this says something like introduction or the sodium trap. Then as I upload that background, I'm uploading the one that's real dark, right? So I'm uploading this one right here. So I put this in and then you're not going to see it on here. You just know it's uploaded. And then this is where I'm going to put in all of the information for the class, right? So I'm going to open up another window and just grab some of that information from one of these. So I'll just take this and just copy it. And I'll just paste it in here. All right. So this is how this works. You see it all right here. And then down here, it shows you what it's going to look like on their side. So if you wanted to say, I want to put a space between these objectives and stuff, this is kind of like your previewing screen. So I have my background uploaded. I have the name of it. I have all of this stuff in here and you can actually like import pictures and stuff, but I wouldn't do that. I would just keep this text and then I hit submit. So now you can see my introduction on my title screen is right here. So now what I can do is drop this into my storyboard. So I hit this little button here and it drops that into my storyboard. So now if I hit save and I go back out, and I open this up, now you can see that introduction overlaid on top of that, that title slide. All right, so what questions do you guys have so far? Let's see. I'm adding, I'm answering a couple that were in the Q&A. Somebody asked what platform are you guys actually building this on? I said mostly Keynote, which is like PowerPoint, which is what you've pretty much all seen us using today. And then um, Austin Brooke had asked, where do you, go for icons, images, and other graphics? Do you bother with royalty-free? I said, sometimes um, we do have a subscription to stock uh, stock image place, which we use sometimes. Um, I, I can show them that later. Uh, but a lot of the stuff 
we just find or somebody sends us or or whatever um and i'm gonna um, i'll show you guys the the keys to the kingdom here real quick this is uh one of foam frat's biggest kept secrets but if you have an image or something that you you like like let's just say um you wanted to get a picture of an epoch right and you're trying to figure out the best way to do that what we'll do sometimes is we'll actually take like a shape let's just take like this this uh square here i'll make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see this i'll take that and then i'm going to just turn the opacity down a little bit and do the same with this and you can actually trace out this and make it your own you can change it up if you want and so what you would do is you would trace this out, add the buttons, add all the components to it, and I can see through it, right? And so I'm not going to do the whole thing. I did it earlier, but this is what it could come out looking like when you're done. And so then you take that and all of these little components here, and I'll just erase the background now. And then I'll you can see all the different pieces, and then I can just group them together. And now I can move this thing wherever I want. I can shrink it down and put it in somebody's hands. But this was Rotate all just, it. what's that? Rotate it or put information on the screen. Yeah, exactly. So then like, let's say I was doing a class for my company on Epoch. Then I can take this, throw that on there, take a snapshot of that and upload it into studio. And that looks a lot better than just using some grainy photo that was used on their, their site. So I did that a lot. I did that like when I was creating my own ambulance for the intraortic balloon pump talk, like look at all the pieces that this is like all the data or all the, uh, the points on here. And so each one, each little wall, each section, each shadow, all that was done. Like, because I took a picture of an ambulance and then just traced out all of those things. All right, Sam, I'm going to flip it on over to you for uh, for the green screens. Cool. And then somebody was asking, um, Jeffrey Hale asked, what platform are you actually building this on? So I said, um, I think I asked that in, or answered that incorrectly because I said keynote and stuff. What we're uploading it to is Foam Frat Studio. So this is the what you see over here with that studio logo in the background uh, that Tyler has up right now. That's That's our learning management system. So... That's uh that's the platform that we're uploading this all to. It's kind of propri proprietary to us. Okay, green screen stuff. Yeah, let's talk about creating the actual videos. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I gotta figure. So I'm not gonna do a screen share first. So I'm actually gonna do. I want to show you guys around this office real quick first. So I'm gonna change my camera. Tyler and I were thinking of this really funny, uh, <laughs> really funny joke before. How weird to see my, oh, I'm going to change my microphone too, because I'm not going to be next to this thing. You look like an alien right there. <laughs> this is a weird, see how overexposed I am? Isn't that really weird? Like, look at how, how bright my face is. That's how bright my face really is right now. Yeah. And then you look through this camera with a different, um, with a different sensor on it. Isn't that weird? Yeah. And your mic just changed too. Did it. Um, so I got to change my mic. Hang on. Hear me okay? Yep. Probably sounds a little echoey. All right, cool. So I'm going to use this one. All right, so we got this. So I want to show you guys my green screen uh, setup real here. So this is the camera over here. So this is, uh, that's not the camera I actually use, but I'll have like, sometimes I'll have this camera uh, mounted over over there. I just have a webcam on there right now. And then it's a couple lights. So I got one light up here, it's just on a tripod. And then I have another light over here that usually comes closer to me. This is my microphone that I generally use. And I'll show you guys how I set that up real quick. But um, is this gonna shoot me from this direction? And then totally opposite is going to be this uh, green screen over here. Let's get a little more slack on this, this cord. So I'm just going to have a couple lights. Um, I'm not going to actually turn these ones on. It's all about getting like even um, uh, even light on the green screen. It doesn't have to be super brightly lit. You just want it evenly lit. So I keep a couple up on the ceiling like this. Um, if you, I, I have a crappy setup for this, to be honest, because this is a very small room. Um, so I have to get pretty creative in here. If you have a larger space, this is a uh, hundred times easier. So I'm going to switch this camera over now. 
And I'll show you guys kind of what the actual setup looks like. We'll go, so this is the camera actually coming from the green screen. So in a lot of stuff that you guys see, this is this is where I'm at. So um, I'm gonna move these lights around just a little bit and turn some of them on. This, these are shotgun microphones. You don't have to use anything like this. I'm just showing you guys kind of behind the scenes, like how we do this. So there's usually something like this where you have a shotgun microphone overhead and then uh, usually a light kind of closer to you like this. And so if I was here, this would be like more of like a seated type deal where that, that thing's right above me. I would move these things out of the way and whatnot. So it would be just that green screen pretty much behind me. So I would just hit record at this point. And like I said, if these things weren't here, I would light that background a little bit. And this would be my green screen shot. Um, or I, I could also come back here, get rid of this guy. And you know, maybe this could be like up higher and I could do a standing green screen essentially like this. I suppose this thing is a little bit low. It's crazy how close you got to get your shotgun mic for it to pick up in a green screen. Yeah. Like it's got to be like just out of the shot. Is it? Uh, yeah. So this is probably how it actually look. And like I said, these things wouldn't be here. So if I move these, you guys can see a little. By uh, how we have these this green screen set up. So you don't want to be like really obstructed by anything. This thing is actually usually up here when I'm shooting like this, but. You know, here I am, and maybe I'd be right, right about here probably, and I have green screen all around me. I'd light that up a little bit, and then usually some of the bottom of me is cut off. So this is this is the green screen setup. Um, that's what I'm going to show you guys for kind of the, the setup type deal, because we're just going to take a shot that I already did. I'm going to show you guys how that works. It's actually pretty simple. So now that we know that green screen is like super simple to set up for your shot and everything, I'm going to show you guys actually what I do with one of these things. I feel like I'm on some kind of show or something right now. Like I'm switching all these, <laughs> I'm switching all these cameras and I'm back, you know, you'd never know all that stuff was going on behind me. So this, I'm going to do a screen share now and we're going to take one of these. Switch your mic to, I think here. Oh yeah. I'm still on the uh, MacBook. I should be coming through the regular one now, right? Yep. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up iMovies. This is another free thing and everybody uses, you know, a different um, platform for this. You don't have to use iMovies or anything like that. If I could get it to open right now. There we go. Everybody always takes the Educator's Atlas course and then goes out and buys a Mac right afterwards because they see all the stuff that you can do on, a, on an Apple computer. And I'm sure you could do a lot of it on, actually, probably not on a Windows. But. So this is, imagine that I just took this you, know, you guys can very easily see from that setup um th this is not anything fancy right so how do you go from you know just having yourself in front of a green screen to actually doing something with it so you know i could take one of these things and you're like okay let's let's grab something i want to put in the background i just grabbed silly examples i just threw this stuff together from stuff i found real quick and so it's like okay maybe i want to put myself in this spaceship and these you know th this is green screen too where these things are cut out and that's really or it could be a png where parts of the image are missing and you're like, okay, I want to put myself on top of that. I'm just going to see how it looks. And so you come in here and so you drag this up here and you're like, okay, how come it's not working, right? So on this program, for example, you just come up here to this little picture in picture thing. I just, I'm just showing you guys how this isn't a tutorial on how to use iMovies or anything like that. This is just an example of how easy this is. So you guys understand the process and it really doesn't take any time. Imagine I recorded my whole video in front of that green screen. Now I just come in here, there's a little cleanup tool. And uh, ooh, that didn't go very well. <laughs> well, it reminds me of that picture. <laughs> yeah, let me try that again real quick. Yeah, you can key out. It's called keying. This is called chroma key, and you can key out too much yourself. And so I won't do a super good job on this, but generally, you just you just get rid of a bunch of that stuff, and you know, it it starts to look like okay, you know. That doesn't look like very impressive right now, but it's not the worst, you know, that could be a different background. So what if I wanted to add another layer? Maybe I want to make it look like, uh, you know, it, this spaceship is flying through these, maybe it's microscopic and it's flying through this, this blood vessel, you know? So I could take those two and I could stack them, you know? And so now, it, you know, it's pretty cheesy, but it, it looks <laughs> like it, it works, you know? 
And then, so then I could take myself and say, I'm going to put myself in there. Right. So not the best, but this took three seconds, you know, you know, that, that is not very difficult to do. And you can tell that I really edited the colors on myself as well, because it wouldn't make a lot of sense if I was super brightly lit, you know, in this, in this scene. Right. Or if I was flying through this like wormhole, like obviously my colors would be much different. So you have this wormhole. I wouldn't be like, you know, red and yellow in here. I would be, I would be very washed out and I would be like a gray blue, right? Or like, imagine I take this uh, Windows 98 background <laughs> and I did my, my green screen. And so I would be like really overexposed in this one. You see how the, the blacks aren't as deep. My shirt's kind of washed out because it's almost like I'm, I'm out in the sun or something, right? So now that that looks a little bit different. Still, you know, for for garbage, it doesn't look that <laughs> it doesn't look that bad. Or I could take like a moving background, like um, like this one, and uh, yeah, maybe that looks a, a little bit better. I could probably do a little bit better on the on the coloring. Um, what you're going to see in a lot of green screens, and, and here I added like an effect. It, this is all very easy to play around with. I added an effect to me and the background, and now it kind of looks like I match a little bit, right? Like going from that Windows 98 um, to, to this one, it looks a little bit more believable. And, and green screen doesn't always have to look believable. It's just something that gives you some space. It, it looks like you're in a wide open space. It kind of sets the watcher's mind at ease. Um, and it doesn't look like you're in this little, little confined, depressing space. You can use stuff that looks like it's right behind you too, like this. This is just some random, I just typed in like background, you know, computer background on Google Images. And I grabbed this background right here. Now, this one is the first one that we're looking at that is not giving me a bunch of depth behind my camera. And it kind of looks like I'm standing or sitting right against a wall. And it kind of looks weird. It's a very weird like um, separation between me and the camera. So what I could do is I could come in here and I could just edit that picture in the background a little bit and then make it look like I am, you know, just do some quick edits to the color and stuff. And, and I could probably get myself to look a little bit more like I belong in that picture. And again, this, this picture is not meant to look like I am really there. It's meant to look like I have, I'm in a production studio or something. I'll show you guys uh, what I mean here. So this is all really easy. Um, I showed you guys how to remove that background real quick. And you know, this one, this first picture started off looking like crap, but then, you know, we can use some other things and you can actually get a pretty, you know, with that same video clip, you can get a pretty produced looking feel. And I'll show you guys some examples of what we've done there. So here's some quick green screen, like uh, fails and whatnot. So I'm actually going to play this now. You just, can you see that? Okay. Is that set up? All right, Tyler. Yep. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. So, so you're a slightly bored educator browsing Amazon. You decide you're going to you know try one of these things and make it look like you're skydiving or something. Here's some just quick do's and don'ts. Um, here's a really common thing standing right in front of it having a wrinkly green screen. Here's what happens. You get wrinkles in here and it ends up looking like a, a shower curtain. Essentially, it's like what's behind you, right? So obviously, if this was real, he shouldn't have a, uh, a shadow here. So you want to be far enough away to have, you know, not have a shadow. And then the wrinkles in this are terrible, right? Really bad. And if you look, what happens here when you're too close to it, it's a low quality image, but you know, whatever you can still see the green bleeding off into him. So what happens in, in this scenario is that your shadow bleeds onto the green screen and the green screen bleeds onto you. Yeah, so, so not good. We, we wanna avoid all that stuff. So try to stay a little bit further away. Here's a, it's a general setup. This is kind of what we were doing over there, um, except I have a couple lights. And so this is like kind of a general setup. You want as much distance between you and the green screen as, as you can pretty much. Otherwise, um, some pretty funny stuff happens like, <laughs> you become the green screen. So if you like are wearing a color that is similar to the green screen, it will project onto you, which is pretty funny. Uh, it can turn you into a floating head, which is hilarious, or it can turn you into a video, which actually could be kind of fun if you use it the right way. <laughs> this kid is really funny. This kid's like my hero. He wore a green screen to picture day and they take your picture in front of a green screen. So they were not able to like remove the background without removing his shirt. So he like became the background, which is, pre which is pretty funny. So those are some green screen don'ts. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the show Cosmos before. And uh, they do a lot of really good green screen in there. This is actually kind of a crappy green screen that they did. Um, it's very obvious that he's in, he looks very removed from that background. It's kind of weird. The background is very hazy. He's very sharp. 
Um, it's kind of strange. But if you took something like this and, and you just got rid of him, like just to show you guys how simple this stuff is, um, I just drew over him and kind of edited the picture a little bit. I didn't do a great job editing it, but you know, this is how it ended up. And you could use that as your background and you could just put yourself right in front of it. So I call that the basic background, essentially. Here's a picture of Tyler using it. So notice what's happening here. Tyler's got depth. This is from the 2021 update. Tyler's got depth behind him. And then it looks like an imaginary wall. And it looks like that thing behind him is very large because what Tyler's done here is he's created space. This looks like a floorboard back here. But your brain doesn't even really think about that. It just It's just thinking he's in kind of like this wide open room, but he's standing in front of a green screen. Same thing here. They can't even tell where this background really ends. It's kind of abstract. And then we know how a computer is shaped too. And so he's got depth right here because you, you know this is moving away from you. So it, it creates the illusion that something's far behind him. And then he just created his slide like that. Same thing here when I was this 2021 update. I'll, I'll show you guys the background that I use. It's right here. So here's that background. And I'm going to take this apart real quick and just show you guys how to do this. So here's the actual slide. Um, there's a light image right here. That backlight is everything too. That really yeah. separates you from the background. Yeah. So here's, here's the whole thing. You know, it's just, just some colors, essentially. Some colors and some gradients. And here's like just a picture of a floor I found on Google. So I was like, floor, I want it darker. Put our logo on it. <laughs> um, make the background dark, um, darker. Put some lights on it and then just position them the correct way that this is a little bit off maybe, but you guys see what I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, talking about here is I should probably get rid of that little black stripe. I don't know if I had it in the actual, video. I don't know why it's relaxing watching you do that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like in the actual, video. you can see in the actual video, I don't have that little black streak, but um, that's what it ended up looking like. And so, that is a way to present information, present slides. And instead of your, just your slides being behind you, because you can turn yourself into a talking head really easy. It's yeah. really easy to be a talking head, remove your background and look like your slides or just your background. That's fine. Um, but it'll give it a really produced feel if you were to maybe even put your slides up like this, look like you're presenting almost in a room. And it's, it's a little bit different. It takes a lot of playing around with. So that's the first kind. And that's just... Um, I just call that the basic background because you're presenting information next to you. Now, the other way to do this and what Tyler and I have become a fan of is something called the cutaway. So this is what I use for the second half of the 2021 update. I don't know why I chose this picture of myself. I think I just took a <laughs> screenshot and <laughs> that was it pretty much. But um, this, I want you guys to notice something very interesting about this. I'm going to use uh, these other pictures of myself as, as an example here. Let's, let's do this one. So this is how it started. This is no editing. I took that background and I just put it behind me, took a, took a picture, right? So how could I make that better? Well, let's, let's make it look like my lighting matches it a little bit. Okay, that, that kind of looks a little bit better. It's all kind of blurred together. And so I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to actually do something really weird to it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually take the image and I'm going to put a bunch of black bars on it. Why would I do that? creates the illusion of depth so now it it almost seems like this is a black floor leading to a wall behind me but i could do a little bit better i could blur those edges a little bit blur the background make it not so sharp and then what i would do is i'd take my video and i would lighten myself up a little bit not high quality images here that that i'm dealing with um so they're, they're kind of thrown together but that's a big difference right to start with this on the left, and you guys saw how easy I can do that in, in five seconds, stand in front of here, light it, record it. Come over here, I showed you guys how to take that green screen out. And this is what it could look like. This legitimately looks like I'm on like a Vice documentary or something about <laughs> street, about like, um, about graffiti or something like that. So what's it like? Like you'd have a, like a disguised voice. Yeah, yeah, you could blur me out a little bit and they'd say, so when did you start tagging? Uh, you know, when did you start spray painting, you know, tagging everything in the city? And I'd be like, started six years ago, you know? And so, it, but it looks like that would be like, the, you know, I could easily use something else. And it, this could be an EMS background or something like that. But going, going from this to, to going from this is, is not a big stretch. Now, where I get those black backgrounds from, or the idea from that was actually from, um, was actually from stuff like this. 
This is a masterclass video. Notice how they do this. He's got this black background that comes up. So this is the shot. You can see him, his chair. This is uh, James Cameron, director. And so you can see this blurred back, right? It's black up to a certain point. And then you see this image, but notice the image. It gives you a ton of depth. It gives you a very produced field. Is he supposed to really be in this, you know, furnace? No, it's a screenshot from, uh, or it's a, it's a, it's an illustration essentially from what is it called? Uh, Terminator or Terminator dies in the vat of, of molten metal. And so I'm like, I want to make something like that with some, with some lines in it and with a studio feel to it. And that's, that's exactly what this is. What I, I like put- about this too, is like, I feel like a lot of educators have a very small space to record in, right? I mean, you're either doing this in your room or you have a little office at your shop that you're doing it in. And you can see Sam is in a really small area, but then you look at this picture and it looks like it's, it opens everything up. It doesn't look so confined and claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. And you literally just have that on your wall in your office. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times when we do lectures and we're even guilty of this early on is like, it would be like a video of us teaching like at our computer. And then you would see our screen also on the side. And now as we start re-recording our stuff, we want to go to like a cutaway, a different version of a cutaway where you're explaining something and then it goes and it shows you the graphic or the illustration. And then it comes back to you talking and then it goes somewhere else. That way you're always switching things up to keep the, the mind busy. Yeah. And so this is the, uh, here's the picture that I actually use for this. And I put, I put gray borders around it so that you guys could see where the actual picture starts and ends that I used to put behind me. So everything that is, you know, obviously you see the borders of like the black and stuff here, that's the actual picture. And so a bunch of the picture is black and it gives me that depth of field. There's another one that I did right here. I'm actually going to share my computer sound real quick and i'm gonna see if you guys can hear this let me know um this was so when tyler and i were were learning about this green screen stuff i was sending a bunch of videos i had one where (laughs) i acted like i was on um i'm not gonna play it but uh, i acted i took this taj.0 background and i made my own with like the foam frat logo and stuff and i had me standing over here on the right and then i had a, a a video of tyler getting kicked punched in the nuts over here on the left and I was doing a reaction to it or like I found this one online and so I'm like oh I'll kind of make my own version of that and so this is what I made for like the foam fret one and actually what's kind of cool is that um the background moves I put a moving background in here if you guys can see Tyler can you kind of see that on your end like oh yeah yeah no that looks that looks slick so you you can do a bunch of different stuff with it basic backgrounds but um I'll show you guys this one that I did with sound. And I, I added some other stuff to this. Like um, I wanted it to look like I was on intervention or something. You guys ever seen that when they play like the soft guitar and they tell you like a sad story. And so that's kind of what I was going for here. Um, I'm just using a crappy microphone and stuff. I was just really testing this out. Can you hear that? Yeah. I think the problem with creating the documentary type feel is that the green screen is a real uh, pain in the ass <laughs> pretty much all the time. So I want to bring your guys' attention to something. First of all, notice the black borders in the background. You can see on the top of the screen, there's that black border. Bottom of the screen, there's that black border. That's what's giving me that depth. I'm kind of off center. And you can see my coloring kind of matches that background. If I was overly red, or overly gray in this, you know, I wouldn't really match that background. So I adjusted my color to kind of match that background. So it would seem like that light's coming off of me. The other thing that can really give you a produced look is notice how the camera is panning. Uh, after I did the shot, what you can do is you can just program it to kind of go, f- you know, from point A to point B. And the whole time, uh, something that we're trying is to never have a still camera. And so as you go through here, you can see it's slowly zooming to the top right. Can you guys see that? Mm-hmm. And then eventually it, uh, it comes back out. So that's, um, that's pretty much what I have for you guys for this green screen stuff. It's, uh, it can, you know, if you look at this shot right here, like you would really think that that was done in a studio. A lot of people thought that for the 2021 update, we, what we did was really used a studio, but we're using mostly free software with cheap green screen setups and some, you use your I phone actually, camera, right? Actually. Yeah. I, I recorded this on my iPhone. 
Um, so really I technically I could have done this, uh, without any equipment that I didn't already have. So it's, it's really pretty simple. Um, it takes some, it takes some trial and error though. You just have to make a bunch of stupid videos, um, and send them to everybody and flex on them with your green screen skills. And, uh, that's, that's essentially how you get good at it is just play around with it make some funny stuff, make it stupid. And eventually you'll be like, Oh, I bet you it would look really cool if I did this one little thing, you know? And so that, that's how we're, we're going about, uh, kind of getting, breaking into this, this different realm of how to, how to present. And I, I, I love those master classes and stuff. And so I try to, I'm trying to mimic that a little bit because I like their style. So I'm going to talk a little bit about animation. I know it, we're probably going to go over 10, 10, uh, 10 o'clock over an hour, but if you guys got to head out, that's fine. We're recording it. So you guys can always come back and watch it. Um, sometimes you need an animation to help you tell a story, help you teach a class. And there's really two different types, right? So there's like the built in animation where that's like, I went in, I just put this, this video in here. And then I say, all right, I want this little probe to come in from the top. And then I'm going to have a triangle form. And then I'm going to overlay this. And these are all like real built in animations. And then you have like custom animations. And I don't know if you guys remember when we would do the foam frat flashes, but this one told a story about somebody with pericardial tamponade. And I wanted this little probe to peek out of the bag. And then you'll see like he actually comes out of the bag here in a second. And so we were trying to figure out like the best way to do these types of animations. And so I'm going to show you the first one, the built in animation. So there is a app called complete body Atlas. You guys ever heard of that before? So this is a, a picture from complete body Atlas. And I'm actually going to bring up the, um, I'm going to bring up that app real quick. So you guys can see that it's pretty cool. You still use that Sam? Complete Anatomy, that's what it's called. Complete Anatomy. I, I'll use that one and a couple other ones. There's uh, that Anatomy Atlas, and then there's another one. I feel like I have maybe three of them or something. They all kind of do different stuff. Yeah, this is super nice because you can go in and you can find a certain thing that you're looking for, right? So I can turn on like the connective tissue if I want. I can put on like the, uh, put it, here's the arterial system. And so then I can zoom in on a certain area and I can just take a screenshot or I can ac actually record a video. So that's what I did with this. I just like, I wanted one of like the, uh, the heart. And so I just got a picture of the heart. I recorded me going like this. And once I get that recording, then I just import it into here, right? So here is the actual video of like the heart pumping. And so then I just took this and spread it out. So now you can see like, I got rid of all the words. So I'm just zoomed in on this. And then you can take, you know, I just took this little, uh, this little shape to show how to get a parasternal long. And so on keynote, if you want to make something move, you take it and you got this animation up here. And I'm going to just show you the build orders, but you can make it slide down by picking which you know, like, so right here, I'm telling it, I want it to move from top to down, top to bottom. And then I put another little thing in here to rotate, but those are all like these built in animations. So like I could make, I'll just take like a square here and I could say, all right, I want this square to appear. That's a build in. So you can do like a, um, like an iris. Right. So that's a build in. I didn't have to like customize that animation. It's just built in or I can do an action. So an action is like if I wanted this to move from here to here, I'll do an action move and then I'll say where I want it to move to. I want it to move over here. And so then it does that. Right. So now I have a build in for it and then I have an action for it and it moves from there to there. And so that's like very elementary animation stuff, right? But let's say you have something where uh, you wanted like, like I wanted this little ultrasound probe to be peeking out of the bag, or maybe you have a intraortic balloon pump talk and you want to see the heart actually contracting. What I'll do is the same thing I showed you before. I'll find like a picture of an EMS bag on Google. I'll trace over it with all these different dimensions. 
And, and then each one of these shots, you can just like take this and duplicate it and then change one thing on it. So this right here is just a bunch of different shots. And then what I do is I just fan through these real quick and I do a screen recording. So I'll just hit my, you know, I'll do like control five. I'll pick to do uh, just this portion of the screen. And then you can scroll through all of these real quick. So, all right, let's do a record. And then I'll just scroll through it. So the, when, whenever Sam and I are showing people how to build like your own ambulance or like this was a cath lab that I built, they're always like, God, it seems like it takes so much time to do that. But the thing is, is once you have that stuff done, you can use these same characters and these same pictures in like a ton of your talks, right? So I can use this picture of the back of the ambulance whenever I need a picture of the back of an ambulance. So you could almost start like a library of characters that you use of uh, EMS bags of different EMS tools. And I think it's Sam and I's dream to eventually have like the foam frat library of images and medical devices that everybody could go in and just Hey, can I use this? Hey, I need a picture of an epoch. You know, let me use this epoch. But that's the key to a really good presentation is finding ways to tell your story. And it can, I mean, you can tell these are just really simple drawings, but it helps when you're trying to explain to somebody how, you know, Norman came in and he's feeling weak and you see the lady typing on her computer right there and she, she gets him in the back and they, they put them on the monitor and then you get your EKG that pops up. Uh, we use iSimulate little monitors to get pictures of. This really helps you tell the story in a, in a unique way that makes people follow along. So when you're uploading your videos into studio, I'm going to open this up big screen here. I'm going to go into just like this class here. You're just going to hit this little plus button and you have the little movie button here and it says add video. Very simple. And there's no max like um, uh, file size that you can upload. You can upload any file size you want. Uh, we wanted to make sure that that was possible so you could upload high quality videos in there. Which and was not easy to do. No, they had something called multi-part upload. And so that takes the file and the, the developers did a really good job with that. But you can upload any size video. Um, I think it's just MP4. You know, you, you can't upload like SCORM files or anything like that. Or an and MOV, then, I think. I don't think it matters. What is it? It's or MOV? M -O dot MOV or MP4, whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, and so then once you upload them, they're all going to pop up, populate here in the video section. And then you just hit the plus button and you drop those into the storyboard. So you can tell right up here, I got the title slide. I got these three videos and then I have the, uh, the quiz down here. And then once you get them all set up and if you want to move stuff around, like let's say I wanted the frequency and title volume after dead space, I can move that. And then you just got to make sure you hit save, move it back. So I don't forget. And then when I hit save, look in this little bottom corner and you're going to see it'll say uh, success. So then I know it's actually been saved. All right. So we got title screens. We got videos. There's also text content. Um, I know somebody asked if you could upload PDFs and right now you can't upload a PDF. I think if I had to, what I would do is take a picture of it and then upload it as an image in the text content. But soon you will be able to upload PDFs. We just don't have that uh, capability right now. And I guess I never even thought about uploading PDFs when we were designing it, but if that, I do, yeah, I know that's something. Section. Like we, What's thought that? About PDF, we thought about PDFs for file storage, but not for within a lesson where you could download a, an asset. So it will be, that'll be available. When creating a section, there's a thumbnail option. Do we need to upload a thumbnail for the entire section? Uh, you don't No, you don't have to. Cause it, well, I mean, I guess you would, because the only time you're really going to see that is when you go into your manage sections, that's where you're going to see the thumbnail. We just made these because these are also what you see as the buttons on the top, but you cannot make your section a button on the top right now. We kind of wanted to control that a little bit just so that wouldn't get messy when people try to log in. 
Um, what did you see? Are your characters like Norman just tracings also? No, those are actually like just shapes that we put together for it. So like I just came up with like real rough shapes of circles and stuff. I can I'll take uh, this guy here. I mean, I, I just took a, a circle and then I tried to make like some hair for it and <laughs> I did not spend that much time on on this. This is I did I did put a neck shadow on though. You know, <laughs> I had to get that neck shadow. But no, these are just little characters that I've used. I've I we have gone more in depth with uh, like the characters, and I have traced some before. Um, I was trying to find the uh, the one that we did for the Pocus one. because that one we actually spent some time creating some characters this one actually we we did the shadows for like the helicopter we did a walking sequence for like i did like piezo the probe and then like hands and stuff so i i mean you could take a picture of your own hand and then like trace over it if you wanted it to look a certain way right now we're working on some stuff for fpc and uh, CCPC. And so I'm trying to do like the emergency shutdown sequence where it's, you know, you're doing the throttle fuel battery break. And I want to actually like simulate a cockpit and then be able to show all of those things for an emergency shutdown of a helicopter. So I'm in the process right now trying to animate out the entire cockpit. So that way we can show that. So what I did is I went to work and took a picture of the cockpit. Um, does that, this character look familiar? This is a uh, this is well, it's kind of Roger from the uh, from the, the hundred one Dalmatians. I made him the flight medic. And then I made like this little Batman symbol around that. It's a lot of fun and it's relaxing to just sit down and just be working on this stuff. And then as you're doing it, I almost I don't know if it's the same with you, Sam, but like you're spe let's say you're spending a lot of time creating something and you're going through like the ambulance as you're doing it, you're thinking about how the talk is going to go and mm -hmm. like ideas that you could do. And then one idea leads to another. And when you're done with it, here's the, uh, I had needed like two different pictures of like the ambulance. I needed like the inside of it, but when you're done with it, you can just reuse these pictures. You see them doing CPR and then walking in and putting the bag in. Nobody would ever think that we're using Keynote for all of this stuff. <laughs> Sam, anything you want to add with the uh, the animations? No, I don't think so. If you guys are just starting out with them, you don't have to use pictures and stuff like that. I mean, there are a lot of times where um, we have to present some information for like a summary or something or a table or a graph on the screen. You want to show them a, an example of a graph that builds in or like a table that builds in or anything? Yeah, how yeah. simple that can be. Yeah, absolutely. Because those animations that Tyler was using, so like the the um the iris or just the appear stuff and whatnot, um, you can use that for font as well if, if you want to. You don't have to use it for a bunch of pictures or anything like that. But one of the things that we really try to do is we try to build the information in as we're talking about it so that there's not a ton of information on the screen that we're not addressing. Yeah. Because so, what people just start to do is they start to interpret it and they stop listening to you. So we always try to, as we're introducing things, it pops up on the screen, which is why we're so big into having it appear at a certain time or building in gradually with animations. Yeah, I like to do this thing. You guys have probably seen me do this in talks before, but I'll start off with like a real busy page and almost everybody's like, oh my God, he's not going to read that, is he? And then I'll fade it out like that. And then I'll simplify it to just the points I want them to take away from this. So I'll explain like what they needed to be put on ECMO, what the qualifications were. And then I'll actually add in the graph and we'll only add in the number that we're talking about. And I'll be like, so what do you think? How many of the people in the standard ECL or in the ECMO group do you think survived out of 14? And you get them to buy into it and then you show it to them. You know, it, we, we talk about like giving breadcrumbs to like the pigeons and the ducks and stuff or the geese. Like you want to just give them a little bit of breadcrumbs just to keep them waiting on you. So that way you don't just pop this whole thing up at once. And then they read it all and then they check out like Sam was saying, you want to show them exactly what you're talking about. And then once you see, once it's on the screen, you can go to something else because they've already seen that they want to know what the next thing is. All right.
Before we close it out, what I want to show you guys real quick is how to build a quiz. And so I'm going to open this back up. Let's go into, well, first off, let me show you this. So whenever you are building a quiz, it has to link to a certificate, right? And so for us, all of our certificates are right here. So you can see there's you know, 256 different classes that are built into this. And so what we'll do when we want to build a certificate is we'll go in and just add a new class into here. And so you see this little plus button right here. What you're going to do is you're not going to have all the foam frat classes. So you're going to have this where it's just empty and you're going to have to build your own certificate. So you'll hit this little plus button and then you'll put in the course name. You have to come up with a course code. It could be 001 or whatever you want. Um, but that's how it's well, going to probably come up with a system for your own. <laughs> yeah. Come up with whatever system you want to use. Then you put the length of how long the class is, and then you can pick from these different templates. So the templates are right up here. So we have, you know, cap C F3 for the recorded classes and then F5. And this is what they look at. So you can see the template name and then you put anything this, you could say this is done by Miller ambulance or this fire department, and then it right here, you put the dollar sign an hour, and that's just the code abbreviation. But what that does is that allows whatever number you typed in for how long the course is to go into that spot. And so then you submit that, and then you always have that. So if you put in like XYZ ambulance, this is just a test. When you pick your template, that's the template you'll pick. And you won't see our templates. You'll have nothing here. So you'll have to build your own template. So you go in and you say, I'm going to create a test. So I'm just going to put test in here. The course code is 001. The length of the course is one hour. And I'm going to use the F3 template. All right. So I hit submit. And so now that is in here. So now if I type in test, I see that, that certificate. So that's all set to go. So now what I got to do is tie that to a quiz. So I'm going to go into the self pace section and I'm going to click on the section that allows me to see the class builder. Then I'm going to click this little uh, class builder here and I'm going to add in a quiz. So I add in the quiz. Um, you can just call it quiz. You don't have to put a description and now in here, you can just type in test or whatever the name of your class was, and that'll pop up. That now ties when they complete this quiz, that is going to allow them access to that certificate. And so now you're going to put in the passing score. We usually use 80 just because of cap C, and then you hit submit. All right. So now you can see that that quiz is built. Well, we haven't added any questions, right? All we did there was say we want to make a quiz and we want to connect it to the certificate that we just made. So now what you do is you click this little uh, pencil here and you actually go in and start building your quiz. So I'll say, you know, what color is the sky? And then you add in a new choice. So you could say blue, red, and you could have as many choices as you want. You can put a ton of these in here. Um, typically we just use, you know, four, but if you wanted to do a true or false, you could do that. So now you got to pick which one of these is correct, right? So we'll say, all right, uh, let's put blue. And now it's best practice to put in a rationale as to why that's correct. You don't have to, but we do prompt you and encourage you to put in, you know, why this is the uh, the correct answer. Wavelengths. So, what's that? Well, wavelengths. So now I can go in and hit add a new question. And then it goes to the next one. So you see this little scrolling thing up here, add in whatever you want. And then when you're done, you hit um, save and exit up here. You can edit the quiz info. So if you wanted to change the passing score, you can, you don't see the course code up here, but it is saved. So I, there's really not a whole lot of reasons to hit this edit quiz info while you're in here editing these test. And then I have to do all right, so I'll hit save and exit. So now I got my quiz built out here and then I can drop and add this. Now the quiz always has to be the
the first thing that you add into your storyboard. So what you're going to notice is when I drop this in here, let me refresh it. What's going to happen? And let's say, uh, so see what happened is it got rid of the title page. So once you're done, add your quiz in first, then go up and add in your, your title screen and then your videos, set it all up the way you want it. And then you hit save. And now it'll appear that way when you actually are going through the videos. So what questions do you guys have on this? Um, can you there import was a one quiz? That just came in the QA. Can you import a quiz from, say, a Word doc or an Excel? No, all these have to be manually put in, which when we switched over to Studio, it took a lot of time to switch all those over. Um, let's see, is there any other questions? Let's open up this one. Can you add quizzes throughout, so multiple ones? So right now the quiz has to be tied to a certificate. So the quiz has to be at the end. However, we do want the ability to have like, you go in, you watch a video and then you answer a question and then you go in and watch another video. So you could select which quiz is actually correlated with a certificate. But right now the quiz has to be at the end of it. Good question. Uh, so the quiz course code is the name of the test in certificates, not the course code. Yeah, because what we found is that we couldn't remember what the course code was when we would be in there. So I told them it, it would be a lot easier if we could just type out the name and it would take the name and actually correlate it with the course code. So it's not done by the name, but you can type in the name and it automatically ties that course code with it. So right now, when you go into certificates, you're not going to be able to add one because we are, I want to say like maybe a couple days from having the templates all set up. What we had to make sure is that this was not going to go to Cap C because right now it's set up for all of this stuff to go to Cap C uh, when we create a certificate. So we just had to subdivide that amongst all of the, the different services. So right now we have 50 something, um, people that are 50, not people, 50 services that are using Foam Brad Studio. We did the math the other day. What was it, Sam? How many certificates are we processing every 15 minutes? Like no, it, was it was like more than that. It was like, we're processing one on. Yeah, I think it's on here. I think we're processing one every five minutes or something like that. Every five minutes, every somebody's processing 24 us. seven on average. Like I, I took our <laughs> monthly and I divided it by 30 and then by 24 to see how many we were doing per hour. And it came out to like, I don't know, I did it by minutes and it ended up coming out like one every five minutes or something like that, 24 seven, 365, which is a lot. Not counting the live classes. Yeah, that's insane. All right, well, we appreciate you guys jumping on and we are as always are open for questions. If you guys, anything comes up, um, what we want is to do this on a quarterly basis and jump on and show you some things that we're working on, how to best use uh, Foam Frat Studio. So that way you guys can build your own content. And Sam and I will probably snoop around and look at the different uh, classes that you guys build and, and see how it's going. We can kind of sneak in and peek into the different areas. Uh, let's see. Uh, are you guys building the certificate templates or is that something we upload? Um, the, so the, the actual wording of the template will be something you put in, but it'll be a very like general, like certificate looking background. You'll just have to put in the text info essentially. And then you guys will get kind of the, the foam frat default certificate, but it, yeah, it'll have like your wording on there and whatever you're counting the hour for internally. Yeah. And I will, um, take this, this whole thing has been recorded. And I'll probably upload it. I don't know. I'll upload it somewhere so you guys can have uh, access to it. Uh, for picks and anatomy. What did John say? Oh, can you list 
the sites to use. Oh yeah. Um, so you want to get the names of those apps then I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them one of the stock things real quick. Yeah. I'm just going to share this real quick. So this is one of the websites that we use and I think it's pretty cheap. I can't remember. It's called story blocks. And this is like one of those stock image things. Honestly, we get a lot of our audio from here. And so like, there's um, a lot of songs will go to like royalty free music. And I always go to like uh, a lot of the beats that we use and stuff like that are sitting in here, like hip hop or electronic, those, those little uh, sounds or those little uh, beats and music that you guys hear sometimes at the beginning of the end of a, of a class or a podcast they usually come from here. Um, but you can also do like video. And we come in here, it seems like a bunch of stuff that's like not really applicable to anything, you know, but when you come in into here, you might type in like, I don't know, let's see what, you never know what you need until you're looking for it. But like, here's medical, you know, and so like a bunch of different, you know, if you're doing a patient scenario or something like that, and you're telling the story and you play and, you know, and the, and the patient was getting her blood pressure checked when she said she began to feel lightheaded and, you know, or the family was present and they're comforting her for the transport. And here's what you find before you start going, you know? So, um, or, you know, you, you reported to the cath lab to surgery and it's playing this little thing over here. So, um, we used incorrectly stock footage can be completely awful and it can make you look really cheap. Or if you use it correctly, um, it can really add to your story if it's not overdone. So like, here's one you could use for a, for a case for a, for a woman getting an ultrasound. And, you know, this sets up the story. And for some reason, you were called to them or something like that, you know, so um, not just the medical ones do we use, but, you know, I feel like the majority of the stuff that we use is actually not medical and we're using it to an illustration or a background or something like that. So that's a lot of the stuff that we use. Um, I can't remember how much we pay for this story blocks thing, but I don't think it's really that expensive and we get unlimited downloads. So you can also do like um, backgrounds and, and whatnot for different um, platforms. And so some of those ones where we were flying through space before or the blood vessels, that's what I'll show you guys. So like that blood stuff we were looking at. Here's, I don't know, maybe this is the one, or is this the one I used? Yeah, here's here's the one I used right here. Isn't that the one we used when we were acting like we were, we were uh, swimming through the vessels? Maybe one of these, I'm sure. Something like that. Maybe this one. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah, there's a, there's a ton of different stuff on here. And like I said, used correctly. You'd, you'd use this in like a cutaway. So I'm sitting here talking to you. I have the green screen background, some kind of some kind of thing. And as I'm talking to you, you know, without even addressing it, it pops over to this video right here as I'm talking about the abdominal aorta, you know, and, and then it comes back to me and I don't even acknowledge that the screen changed, you know, so there's a lot of stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of good stock footage out there um, talking about a microbe entering into somebody, you know, so that, that's a lot of the stuff that we use. The, here's a green screen example of you could remove this green screen and then you would see all these moving around the screen. So um, I'll show you guys a really funny one. Hang on. I know I'm, I'm holding you up, Tyler. No, I don't have anything. We're just hanging out. <clears throat> so you can get all kinds of green screen stuff. There's one that's <laughs> really, there's one that's really funny. Um, and I felt like it was going to pop up right away. I'm going to type in, here we go. Ooh. You can make it so that, you know, it looks like a spider crawls onto the screen or spiders crawl onto the screen. Just I thought to keep their attention. <laughs> yeah. I always thought that would be hilarious. I think, is this it right here? Yep. There it is. So, well, it's not exactly, but you can picture, you know, you're not expecting it. And all of a sudden this starts coming across your iPhone. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. There's ones that really make it look like it's crawling onto the screen. So there, there's a lot of stuff that you can do and, and there's tons of um, resources out there. So I'm uh, sorry, what you were going to put something on. Um, Tyler, you no, I saw that. Greg uh, uh, had his hand up. So I was just wondering if he had a question. Just open the mic up. Can oh, you hear you us, Greg? You put all the websites. I did. Uh, I hit the wrong button. No. Oh. <laughs> well, we can see your camera, Greg. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 um, anybody have anything you guys want to pop on, ask any questions? You don't have to type it. We can actually bring you on. Um, just put your little hand up, literally. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Well, hey, if anyone in here is currently not using Foam for Ad Studio and you'd like a demo, you'd like to try it out, uh, let us know because we can set you up with like a week trial 
and you can see if uh, you think it would be a, a good solution for your team. Uh, when does this go live? What's that? Uh, the uh, the ability for adding certs and stuff? The certs is the only thing that's just yeah. a couple of days off. Other than that, everything is... You could build these classes right now. Yeah. The only thing we have to do right now is set up the... um, Just the quiz has to correlate to a certificate. So we're just getting the certificate function down. So it, it's done, but we just want to make sure there's no bugs. There's like three processes it has to go through before we can actually publish it live. But... By the time you get all your stuff recorded and build all these animations, it'll all be done. So <laughs> we are using it at our agency and the medics love it. Awesome, man. Well, cool. Well, guys, thanks so much for, uh, for hanging out with us. If you guys need anything or any questions pop up, you can always hit us up. We just wanted to pull back the curtain a little bit on some of the foam prep magic movie magics. Sam and I are really into movies and making things look like movies and, both love watching movies so that's kind of where a lot of this inspiration comes from is trying to make it not look like your standard ems education and so if we can help you guys with any tips or tricks or any fails that we've come along the way um you know we'd love to do that we've got a lot of fails and so we can tell you guys about them <laughs> well let's see we have studio i have a friend who just became a training officer at his agency how should i get him in touch with you just email Tyler at foamprat.com or team at foamprat.com or any of us on social media or Sam at foamprat.com. Okay. Any of us. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, Hey, have a great weekend. We'll have this recording. So you guys have access to it and uh, we'll, we'll probably just put it up in, in studio so you guys can watch it. Yeah. All right. Cool beans. We'll see you guys later. See you guys.